Hi, everyone. Tanya Hertz here. I'm the director of the Reconnovation Lab, which is a startup incubator at San Diego Miramar College. And I wanted to talk to you today about giving an elevator pitch and um, giving, a, a, well, I should say this, it's not an elevator pitch because really an elevator pitch is um, is so named because it should last the length of an elevator ride. Um, this is more of a pitch deck. And all of us should have as, as startup founders, an elevator pitch. So a very short version of um, a description of our startup that we can tell to people without any uh, any props, <laughs> any um, slides, because when are you gonna have a, you know, PowerPoint with you in an elevator, right? So uh, we should have that, but then we should also have a two minute pitch deck, um, you know, very short, <clears throat> excuse me, a very short uh, pitch deck description of our, our startups. And then we should have longer pitch decks as well. So more um, complete, depending on how much time we're, we're given by different investors or uh, different, you know, different, uh, organizations, entities that are willing to he hear us. Um, but today we're going to be working on our two minute, our two minute uh, pitch deck. And I have slides for that. So let me go ahead and share those slides with you. And um, I'll make these available to you as well. These are abbreviated pitch deck slides. And um, just so you know, for these, um, you know, for these slides, I do have uh, also some uh, videos that you can watch. Uh, the links to them are right here. And these are videos that, that help you with the, the communication, the, the actual presentation, uh, uh, you know, skills, uh, being able to present in such a way that people understand what you're saying and, and, and are, are really um, drawn in to, to you as a, as a presenter. Um, we know that uh, being an effective storyteller has a, a bigger impact on your startup than you would even, I think, care to, to think. But um, there are correlative studies that show that uh, being a good storyteller is even more important than having uh, previous experience as a startup founder when it comes to things like business valuation. Could mean hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to you. Um, telling your story right. So learn to tell your story right. Um, practice, practice, practice. And um, watch these slides. These are helpful. And they are slides on keeping it simple, using a script, uh, helping with cognitive overload and um, uh, helping to get your message across in a clear, concise way, uh, being enthusiastic, engaging at the same, while well, at the same time, professional and informed. And then finally being comfortable with the technology and, um, knowing how to use uh, certain uh, presentation tools. Okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. So if you notice uh, here also, uh, I'm, I am personally uh, showing my screen while I'm presenting. You wanna make sure that you do the same. Ah, there I am too. Um, you wanna make sure that you do the same when you are presenting so that, um, so that they can see you, people are more likely to actually, uh, they're actually more likely to give you money and all sorts of other, other things and like your presentation uh, when you show your, show your video, show your screen. So make sure that you do that in your, in your pitch deck. Um, when you're putting together your slides, make sure that you use uh, high context, as high a context as possible. So pictures, not words, as much as possible. And realize that most of us people, humans, can either read or listen, but we can't do both at the same time. So your pitch deck presentation should not be just a, a ton of, of pictures, I'm sorry, words that, that people need to read, but they should be uh, pictures and words that support the story. You, you are the one who's... Um, what they want to see. You're telling the story, make it all about, about you and um, use uh, high quality images. Uh, you can, you know, you should use words, but use, use short uh, words, not full sentences, no, no periods, keep them in bullet uh, forms, uh, a bullet form that, that means, you know, bullets are, are, are shortened versions of sentences. 
and only include pictures that add value. Avoid things like clip art. You can use clip art, but use it sparingly and only add them if it, it adds to your story and not just, you know, for the for the purpose of, of being there. Um, which slides do you include on your pitch deck? So uh, the information that I'm sharing here is not just based on my 12 years of experience teaching entrepreneurship, but also based on science and aggregate uh, data that shows what most investors want to see in their, uh, in the pitch decks, the slides that they want to see. And so I'm, I, I give you the 10 slide version that um, investors typically like to see in a pitch deck. And then we have this shorter version where you're only going to use the first six slides and you can, or, or six topics. You can add more if you think you can cover them in two minutes, but it's going to be really hard, right? Um, preview to pitch deck, we say 60 to 90 seconds. So 60 to 90 seconds, really, you know, a minute and a half. That's because we tend to go on the long side and it's better to, it's better to, to be short than, than it is to try to squeeze it all into to two minutes. So um, less is more. Uh, so these are the top 10 slides that we typically like to see in a pitch deck. So which ones do you get rid of? Well, I'll show you which ones we wanna get rid of. But what you don't wanna get rid of, you don't wanna get rid of the why you, the why this, the why now. Every single pitch deck should answer why you, why this, why now. Why you? Why are you the right team? Why are you uniquely positioned to succeed? Do you have the right keeps, um, knowledge, experience, education, personality, passion, skill set? Um, why this? What, why this particular um, problem? Uh, why are you uh, choosing to follow this startup and not one of the thousands of other ideas that I'm sure you have rattling around in your head? Um, is it a huge problem? Is it a significant problem? Is it causing pain in the lives of the customers? And then why now? This is critical. Timing is virtually everything, right? Um, but like why right now in history, is it the right time to solve this problem? And, and is it, um, you know, are you solving a pain point? Are you solving a painkiller or a vitamin? Painkillers are the kind of startups that, that investors like to invest in, not vitamins. Um, those of you who know me know what I mean by that, but um, you, you want to you want to start companies that that really do solve real current problems in the lives of the um, consumers. So what do you want to include in your pitch deck? I have to include you want to do your your why you, right? So uh, this is your introduction <laughs> of yourself and your team. Um, keep it short, keep it sweet. Uh, do do use the first and last names though. I've seen pitch decks where people are really informal. Eh, you don't want to be that informal, you know. Hi, I'm Tanya. You know, Tanya hurts. So informal is okay, but you still want it somewhat professional. So first and last names always include the business name, the business model. Um, so the business model, we mean the, the like like look up what a business model is, right? There are there are uh, you know, commonly accepted, understood ideas of business models, use one of the commonly accepted business models so that we get it quickly and you don't have to spend a long time talking about it. By that, I mean, um, like maybe you'll say something like we're a, a, a B2B, a company that's, you know, B2B platform uh, subscription model or you know, something like that. Like then I, I get it, right? I get it immediately. Oh, that's what this company does. Um, now, this is where you also include your elevator pitch, your one-line elevator pitch. Your one-line elevator pitch is your one sentence description of the business. It's not a tagline. It's not a sales pitch. It's not a, we aim to change the world. Well, what is that supposed to mean, right? No, I like, we, we don't want that as, as business uh, professionals. We want clear we aim to change the world by providing laundry service to homeless people, right? So really clear, right, about what it is that you do. Uh, in the team, when we're talking about the team, oh, and when I say slide, it can be more than one slide. If, if you want to do two and one, fine. But the rule of thumb is one slide per minute of presentation. And since this is two minutes, you're not going to be able to do that. So um, probably maybe... You know, if you do four or five slides, it's going to be tough to keep it in two minutes. Okay, team. 
uh, people behind the business. So you want the role that each team member will have and, and why they have that role. And so this is also tough to get in in such a short amount of time, but you don't want to just say it like, um, my name is Tanya and I'm the CEO. Okay. I'm Tanya Hertz. I'm the CEO because I have experience as a founder and I've started several companies before. Um, this is, you know, this is Javier and he is the, uh, the marketing manager because he uh, has a degree in marketing or whatever it is, right? Tell us why, why you don't have to give, you know, a, description of every little reason why one is enough, right? One sort of example is enough for each person. Okay. The why this, uh, the problem and solution, right? What problem do you solve? Problems are always more memorable when they're linked to a narrative. Your ability to tell a story is your ability to succeed in entrepreneurship. When I say tell a story, uh, I, sometimes people don't get what I mean by this. So I really want to make sure it's clear. I don't mean make up some story once upon a time. What I mean is tell a tell a, a, a narrative, a description about one user and how they experienced this problem so that we get it, so that we can clearly picture, you know, that one person and um, whether that's you or someone you know, uh, I'll give an example of this. Uh, it was for a startup where they were providing services to um children in the hospital using augmented uh, and virtual reality. And the story that they told was about how one of the founder's uh, sisters was, uh, you know, just a, just a child. And she had been in and out of the hospitals her, her whole life and never got to do things like go to Disneyland. And um, so they created a company that brought the Disneyland to, to her. And oh, it was touching, right? Like there was like, like I was choking up, I didn't want to cry, but it, it stuck with me, right? And a lot of, it was stuck with a lot of us. So link your, your, your solution to the narrative. Um, describe how you're going to solve it. Your value proposition is the why now, right? Is it a problem or a nuisance? Is it important in the lives of your customers? And if there are uh, trends that it is, um, you know, tr trends that, that, the business is um, relying upon, like if it's augmented virtual reality, if it's whatever is big right else is big right now, you know, um, um, I'm trying to think of uh, the term, I can't think of it right now, but uh, like machine learning, or uh, if it has anything to do with, you know, working from home, any of those things that right now are huge, kind of sneak those uh, buzzwords in there. Uh, this is what a lot of uh, venture capitalists like to call the secret sauce, right? Like, what is it that makes you uniquely you? And, um, and if you have a sustainable competitive advantage, include that, right? So um, what sustainable competitive advantage is your competitive advantage that you can protect, uh, whether that's with a patent or with um, your unique knowledge or that maybe the team that you put together that's unlike any other team out there, things like this. Go ahead and put that. All right. So you're going to want to include your, well, you can include your market size and financials. If you have, um, if you have that data, uh, only include the financials that you actually have data for. If you are, if you are unsure or you, uh, you know, don't have that, uh, data to support what you're including, don't include it. Um, if you are meeting with an investor, make sure that you have your term sheet, um, that you have, uh, that you've created a, a pre and post valuation of the company and that you have um, evidence that you can support that valuation. Uh, don't ever, don't ever share any assertion that's not supported with evidence, whether that's customer discovery or you know, some other valuation tool, whatever it is, support, support, support. Um, now, in terms of like the Tam Sam Som, I should say this for like your Tam Sam Som or your other financials, you don't have to include them on your short pitch deck. And if you do include any numbers on your short pitch deck, make sure that you are not putting spreadsheets, but you're just pulling out just the, the, the information that's the meat and potatoes, the most important part. Rest of the slides are totally optional. You can include them if you have, but 
you know, you don't only have two minutes, so I, I highly doubt you're going to be able to squeeze these in. But if you can, if you can, you might want to squeeze one or two of them in. Um, yeah. And um, so make sure that you are, when you're talking about your customer base, that you're talking about your, your early adopters only. So um, based on research and that they are a, a, a very clear, narrowly defined target market. You can talk about the overall industry being large, but when you're talking about early adopters, make sure that they're, they're a, a, a niche, right? That they have, um, and that you have a, a forward, backward, complete understanding of them. You know, you're going to have to do concierge service when you're testing your MVP, if you haven't done that yet. And so uh, it's really important that you have a niche uh, focus strategy as a new founder. Use simple, direct language. Prove that you understand your uh, financials and your market projections. Don't include entire projections. Don't use words that you don't understand. Don't get into the weeds. Keep everything high level. Um, you know, know your profit margin per unit, your EOU, economics of one unit, and when you expect to be profitable. Because often they'll ask this. Uh, if you, I've seen so many businesses that, you know, they just, they didn't even understand like how much it cost them to make a particular sandwich. And so when I actually went in and, and did the math on some of their, uh, some of their like food items, they were actually, they were, they were paying people to eat their food basically because they were charging less than it cost them to provide it. So, you know, don't, don't, don't let things like that happen. Um, for your technology, show your demo. If you have your MVP, uh, you know, it, it, as quickly and clearly and concisely as you can, that might be a screenshot of your, of your website or your, excuse me, your app, or if, you, if it's a physical uh, product, anything that you can show to make it easier, right? Pictures say a thousand words, you don't have a lot of time. So pictures are, are good. Um, if you're including the slides in the competition, uh, you'll want to make a, a list of your direct competitors. Um, um, a good idea is a table. I think I might've included a table. Let me see here. Yeah, right there. Um, go back. Oh, this table here is, um, you know, our offering versus the competition. It shows, hey, ours is the best, right? And but it shows some of the things that the competition has. Don't ever try to fake it. Like, oh, we don't have competitors, right? We're the only one in the market. That does not make investors feel good. <laughs> that makes investors want to run the other way. Yeah. Anytime I hear our target market is everyone, I think, okay, they don't get this. They're they're not experienced entrepreneurs. They don't know what they're doing. Um, or I think it's such a brand new market that, um, you know, there, you know, competitors don't exist or, uh, it's not a good thing. So yeah, don't fake it. Let us know, um, who they are. And if they're very similar to you, how your plan uh, to differentiate, uh, if you don't have an MVP or you don't know something yet, you can fake it till you make it. Uh, there's something that I call pretendo type instead of prototype. And uh, yep, yeah, I have slides on this if you and videos about this if you're interested at the rec. Um, when you are, if you are creating an MVP specifically for the pitch deck, uh, don't don't spend time making it pretty. It, you're actually not just wasting time, but you're you're investors don't like to see that and and um, entrepreneurship professionals don't like to see that just uh, make it so that it can it can do what you want it to do right create an mvp that that tests just what you you want to test all right and in the marketing this no i don't know see like i want would want to include all of them marketing is so important but if you can throw in um, something about your your target market uh, demographics uh, as well as the channels that you use to reach them. Everybody nowadays needs to have some sort of a digital marketing strategy. So, you know, share what you, what you have about, um, you know, for digital marketing, if you have uh, the big five social media marketing um, channels, um, you might want to just say that, right? We have YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, or, and maybe you also have TikTok or whatever else, or maybe you just want to say our primary channel is Instagram and we have, I don't know, whatever your metrics show, like 12,000 followers uh, on that channel and we post um, on there daily or something like that. That can just really show, 
hey, there's traction even if we don't have sales, right? And strong, if you are asking for money, then just ask, be direct. Nobody wants to hear you beat around the bush. Take exactly how much you need in exchange for what percent ownership, what the pre and post money valuation is, or at least one, and be ready to, def to defend that valuation. Conclude the pitch deck, then ask questions, right? Or then ask for questions. So you want people to know it's over. And just as strong as you started, uh, make sure that you have something for people to look at while you're doing Q&A. Um, and then make sure that you still have command of the room during the Q&A portion, meaning that your presentation isn't over just because you're in the Q&A section. And um, also uh, when you're answering questions, keep it so clear, concise, short on the questions. They'll ask you for more uh, or for follow-up if they want more, but you don't wanna ramble. So one sentence is the best response, maybe two sentences, but one is even better. That's that. <laughs> And here are, here's the con contact information for the rec. If you want to get a hold of us, uh, follow us on social media, uh, sign up for one of our workshops. And that's that. I will uh, see you all again soon and um, see you in the next video. All right, take care. Bye, everybody. <laughs>